वेलकम टू सुब्रमणी आई वॉज वॉचिंग इंटरव्यू विद माधवन द मेकर ऑफ द रॉकेट्री फिल्म ऑन द इसरो साइंटिस्ट एंड ही सेड द पर्सन हु इज रेस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर वॉट हैपन टू हिम इज द हंड्रेड एंड फोर्टी मिलियन इंडियन पीपल विच इज एब्सोल्यूटली ट्रू बिकॉज or 140 crore indian people sorry 100 so uh, what he said was if people had not if people had simply asked questions as to well we did not have this technology where was the question of selling this technology we would have uh, not had this big spike case and this wouldn't have happened some ib officer or some cbi officer or somebody sitting there if he had just asked this question um, the aside of this is of course uh, it feels atrocious that you pay taxes and you see your money being misused like this that that's an aside i'm not talking about that now but this leads us to one very big thing that uh, why is there not enough of original thinking why don't we think originally why do we just uh, depend on crutches why do we think oh so and so has done the research so it must be good right that's what we do uh, let me tell you when we should do this and when we should not do this in most cases we should not do this especially if you are an investor investing for the first time so somebody comes and tells you that zomato is a good share you should not invest just because that person says it's a good share you have no clue why that person is saying it's a good share right maybe he is talking it up maybe they want to sell it uh, at 75 so they are telling you it's a great buy at 41 right so find out the reason why he is saying so let me give you the example of uh, okay let me tell you why you should when you can do it when you are the ceo of a big mutual fund or an insurance company you have an extremely competent cio and a great team under him they have done equity research or they have done for a long time they have 20 30 50 years experience they come up to you with a proposal saying look this is this looks good uh, should we go ahead with the investment there's a time when you make calls to people and say uh, what do you think about this how is this right that kind of a thing and then you invest because somebody has already done the due diligence somebody has done the work not because uh, not because somebody told you that you're buying right if somebody else comes and tells you the same company if somebody else comes and tells you that this is worth buying you call your cio and say please do an proper investigation see whether it is worth buying not worth buying i have no clue i have no interest in fact you don't even say that you say you just call him and say uh, i have uh, heard of this company do you know anything about it uh, uh, and you know so that the person who is getting the mandate does not know whether you want to buy whether you want to sell whether you want to hold whether you already have and you want to you know any of those things whether you want to uh, play uh, take a bigger bet right he should, he or she should not know this because once they know this then they start acting accordingly they know that they want to please the boss so if i want to buy a uh, buy an automobile share imagine call, imagine calling my research and i am the cio or i am the ceo and i call the research head and say they uh, this company looks good this zomato looks good what do you think that's it you have already biased that person and that person is going to do everything within his power to make sure that you uh um, like the decision that you have taken and you stick to it that is how he or she will work so you are now being manipulated by the other person so be careful about how you even talk or how you even ask but yeah i am more concerned about the uh, risk of outsourcing your thinking you cannot outsource your thinking because if you do outsource your thinking uh you, you will pay a very heavy price so i i search for and found a story of uh, ken uh, ken lewis and uh, warren buffett right so uh, in uh, when was this in 2008 uh, during the uh, fall of the, the, the financial crisis uh, somebody called ken lewis and said um, there is this deal available uh, would you want to invest uh, 50 billion dollars in merrill lynch and um, ken wanted to buy it make make it very clear the story also says that ken wanted to buy it ken wanted to say oh we are bank of america we can bail out merrill lynch and what can we a bigger thing to do uh, so he uh, he called up a couple of bankers and asked them to make a report and obviously his voice would have shown the enthusiasm 
and uh, they made a report exactly justifying the purchase right and uh, after three weeks this was worth zero right straight zero so much so that bank, uh, bank of america considered uh, suing the advisors etc and then uh, backtrack saying we don't want to do it um, what had happened was here was a ceo who was uh, keen to buy it and he calls up let's say somebody from the big audit firms and says uh, can you go uh, do a valuation he hears you very clearly he hears and listens and he knows what you want you want some or you want a document which allows you to justify to the board uh, why you put 50 billion dollars that's it he's not asking you to think the need to think has been already gone you have decided you have called up these bankers to just justify and make a note which is 50 pages um, you got this on a Friday evening, you slept on Saturday, Sunday or even worse, you called up a lot of people who said, yeah, yeah, Merrill must be a great brand, etc, etc, whatever you heard, you heard all that you wanted to hear, right? So, you, this is what happens when you completely outsource your thinking. Now, same thing uh, was uh, offered to, I think, Lehman was offered to uh, Warren Buffett and Warren Buffett sat through the night, uh, Friday night and uh, <clears throat> read through the through the filings 10k filings of uh, lemon he did not like it so he called up the banker and said i'm not interested in this i don't want imagine buffett did not outsource the thinking buffett did the thinking himself came to a conclusion that there are so many things here which i don't want to deal with or i don't understand and therefore i don't want to deal with whatever be the reasons and therefore he decided he did not call up a bankers he did not call up anybody other than his own intellect to deal with the stuff right so that is what when you are the primary investor and somebody is edging you to invest you do not depend only on secondary research you depend on primary research you do it yourself you look at it and say okay i will uh, look at the details and then if i need to i'll hire somebody who will do the due diligence and things like that but first round i need to do it myself so that is the difference between a ken lewis who was investing bank uh, money and warren buffett was again uh, investing berkshire money it's not that it was very different right uh, both are uh, this guy was a salaried ceo this man is the owner so that difference also could be there but largely my take is when you have to take the primary decision that can't be outsourced if you have taken the decision and then you are asking somebody then you just ask somebody to ask via somebody and say i am looking at merrill you don't as ken lewis call up a banker and say what do you think of merrill lynch uh, he uh, he is going to give a report which is to your liking and that you want to buy because he could have heard it in your voice that you wanted to buy <coughs> we have seen this happening time and again i know the one of the big directors of a big company where things were going wrong he just hired a big four and big four gave him a report which said nothing is uh, nothing wrong is happening what happens is when they when they get an assignment they go and find out who is the powerful person and they ask him or her what do you want in the report and that is how the reports are made so you need to understand that people will make a report which they think you want to read and not what really is uh, what you want to, want to read. So, uh, could Ken Lewis have spent the night uh, like Buffett looking through the 10K document? Yes, he should have. Instead, he must have made calls and asked people and people would have said, it's a great brand, you should buy it. Who's going to say no to Merrill, right? And later on, if it turns out to be a good deal, then you'd say, oh my God, why did I put my mouth in there, right? So, <coughs> the and the other problem is uh, also when you uh, when you see some big names you get carried away saying oh these people have done it so it can't be too bad uh, the the company i'm talking about is bad blood i mean the book i'm talking about is bad blood and uh, it's a story of deception over a long period of time uh, the company called theranos which is a blood testing company a uh, similar deal has happened in india i will not get into watch field and you get carried away by the fact that the promoter is saying, I don't want to stay on in this company, take the whole company uh, and you run it yourself. And when these people who bought it realized that it was it was a lot of uh, what I would call in Hindi khoka. Uh, there was not enough substance in this business. But funnily, the, the company which bought this has also been funded by a lot of money in the air. Lot of 10 plus 120 premium, 10 plus 190 premium or 1 plus 219 premium, that kind of premium. 
and they have used to acquire a company and that company is not worthwhile that company is complete shit all the it claimed was fake right so these kind of things happen unless you do your own due diligence especially as the primary investor uh you could get into trouble whether you're investing a million or 2 million doesn't matter or whether you're investing 10000 doesn't matter so please be careful about what you're doing be careful about whom you ask be careful about how powerful you are if you are very powerful people know that you're a buyer then your uh, report gets made according to how a buyer should want it right you never know whether the seller has uh, whether the person selling the company has bribed this company to make a report to look good right you don't even know why this has been done so if you do not apply your independent mind to the transaction then you should not be doing the transaction original thinking is not very common uh but if you don't do that then you could be in trouble like i mean uh, bank of america losing 50 billion 50 billion is big amount of money even for bank of america right but they lost it and berkshire hathaway saved that kind of money simply because one man was willing to do the due diligence himself or at least uh, look at the numbers which is publicly available numbers it's not that uh, he got some secret inside information there was no black edge right so with all this one thing is clear that if you want to be a good investor and you are investing your own money please apply your mind before you ask others whether you should be doing it or not doing it thank you